Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a voiceover for a change, so I hope you don't mind the change of pace. As usual, I have some new products that I want to try and I'm going to mix them with some classic products that I love to use. Today I'm using the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. It is inspired by silk. The idea is it lays on the skin seamlessly. It gives you a beautiful radiant finish. There are 40 shades available in this foundation and it's for all skin types. When applied with your hands, you can get a really beautiful, almost sheer coverage, but it is definitely buildable from medium up to a full coverage. It's not super high in pigment, so it won't give you that kind of camouflage mask finish. It will always look super natural. So my preference is to apply it with my fingers and then just finish off the skin with a sponge. I wanted to pair that with the Luminous Silk Concealer. This is a multi-purpose concealer to cover and highlight, so if you want to use it to brighten under the eyes you can, but you can also use the same shade as your foundation to cover blemishes. What's great about using this under the eyes is the formula is infused with caffeine, vitamin E and glycerin, which gives it hydration so it doesn't look drying under the eyes. There are 20 shades available, which is quite good for a concealer, and again it's been designed for all skin types and all skin tones. I've mixed two shades together today and I'm using a damp beauty blender to press that underneath the eyes and through the centre of the face just to brighten. I do really love this concealer, although I prefer it when it's not been powdered. I am going in with a luminous silk powder after this, but to be honest with you, I don't really love the finish underneath the eyes. I feel like it's a little bit more drying looking than I expected. So this is the new lightweight, long lasting finish powder. It's a glow fusion powder with a radiant finish. As you can see when you open it, it's a double compact, so you get the actual powder and underneath you also get the brush. The brush itself I feel like is a little bit pointless, I don't feel like it's very good for dusting it over the entire face. I see what they're going for but I just didn't like it personally. In terms of the actual powder itself, I feel like it looks beautiful on the skin and it's one of those ones you can really build up and it doesn't look powdery. So initially I was very excited and I think on drier skins this is going to look beautiful for photographic. But after about an hour of wearing this with my oily skin, it just didn't look very nice. It started to look a little bit cakey. So it looked nice, but I probably wouldn't agree that it was for all skin types. Next I'm going in with this Dusty Brown Coal Pencil by Sweet Lashes. And this is going on the waterline and I'm also going to tight line using it. I don't know what happened, but something irritated both my eyes, especially my right eye. And they went really, really red for some reason. So bear with me, it does start to come down a little bit towards the end of the tutorial. So for the eyeshadow today we're going to use the Essential Palette by Vive Cosmetics which is the baby of Jamie Genevieve. The first shade I'm taking is called Buff and we are taking this into the socket line and buffing it outwards, follow the shape of your natural socket and buff it up and out towards the eyebrow bone. I should mention that it wasn't the Swede pencil that made my eyes irritated, that it was irritated before I applied the brown. So going back to the palette we're now taking the shade Delicious which is a chocolate shade and we're buffing this into the same area that we applied buff, but we're taking it ever so slightly lower, so we won't buff it as high, instead we'll buff it into this colour. I'm using a slightly wider fluffy blending brush for this, that way you get a really diffused finish. Dipping our brush back into the shade buff, we're also dipping it into a very small amount of the shade cosy, which is an autumnal orange tone, and this is just going to add some warmth to that brown. And this is going on the outer third of the mobile lid, and also ever so slightly into the socket just where it meets the two shades we've already got there. The key when working with matte eyeshadows is to really work your brush in circular motions and use a nice light hand. It might look more vigorous up close, but it is very light. Next we're going into the shade Lava Rock, which is a slightly warmer brown. Although it looks cooler in the palette when you put it on, it's actually more of a true brown. And using a flat brush, I'm patting this onto the actual mobile lid on the outer third and fading that across as we get towards the center of the lid. Dusting that same brush off and turning it round, I'm dipping this into the color So Shy, which is more like a bone shade, but it is very subtle because when it's on the skin, it almost looks like skin. It adds a very subtle matte highlight to the brow bone. Going back to the eye palette, I'm taking the shade Glimmer, which is a really bright, shimmery champagne tone. And again, using that same flat brush, I'm popping this on the inner corner of the eyes for a highlight. 
You can also do what I'm doing and taking it ever so slightly underneath the tear duct area. It really helps to brighten your eyes. Going into the chunkiest shimmer in the palette called Carrot. This is a really deep yellowy gold. And using that same flat shader brush, I'm popping this on the inner half of the mobile lid and feathering it out towards the outer half before dipping my finger into the shade Thea, which is a beautiful deep golden brown. And I'm tapping that over the outer half where we applied Lava Rock. This has created a beautiful gradient from yellow gold to deep bronzy gold. We're going back to the shade Glimmer and we're going to pull that from the inner corner of the eye up into the shade Carrot. So again, it gets even brighter towards the inner corner of the eye and it's a beautiful gradient all the way to the outer edge, which is nice and smoky. Underneath the eyes on a small detailer brush, I'm taking the shade Lava Rock and connecting that from the outer corner of the top lid all the way along that lower eyelash line towards the inner corner. Once you've applied it, go in with the fluffy blending brush that we used on the inner corner of the eyes that had a little bit of the concealer, because that's going to help to blend this eyeshadow out. I'm going back to my Dusty Brown Cold Pencil by Swede Lashes, and on the outer corner, I'm creating a bit of a thick wing, but I'm keeping it soft because it's a pencil, and I'm going to use a small detailer brush just to soften it, but I do want it to be quite blocky on the outer edge, but this is really dependent on your eye shape. You can just keep the eyeliner close to the root of the eyelashes to make that lash line look fuller. What's great about working with a pencil like this is that it is soft enough to manipulate with a brush. And then when you step away and look at your face overall, it's a lot softer than it looks up close like this. And brown is more flattering. For eyelashes, I'm using these Ardell extension effects in a B curl, which is better for deep set and almond shaped eyes. And once they're on, I'm going to apply a coat of this Sweet Lash Pro Lash Lift Mascara. This is a super skinny wand, and what makes this different is that it really does get to the root of the eyelashes, and the root is the most important part when it comes to mascara because it really does create volume and lift to your lashes. The formula is a little bit wetter than I normally go for, however, with a little bit of air getting into the tube, it will definitely thicken slightly, and it is a super black pigment. This also contains vitamin B5, which is really great at strengthening and lengthening your natural lashes. So when you're applying it to your natural lashes and not just falses like I'm doing, you can expect it to really nourish your natural lashes. You can see here on the bottom that that tiny comb gets right to the root. It really does coat every single eyelash without any clumping at all. It really is lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm filling in my brows with a new product which I've had for a little while and I've been testing it out so I'm going to do a review of it which you will see on my channel coming soon. Moving back onto the skin I'm going to use a bronzer, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Powder Bronzer and as always I'm using my Zoeva 132 Luxe Powder Finish Brush, this is the most perfect brush for bronzer especially if you want to be more precise. I'm working this over my cheekbones, a little bit over the bridge of my nose and around my hairline. The blush I'm using today is also by Vive Cosmetics. This is in the shade Pesca, which is a beautiful peach. There are five shades available, and this is one of my favourites, this one and Sorbet. Jamie describes this one as the perfect blush for someone who's scared of using blush. It's probably the most subtle of the five. I like to apply really pigmented blushes with the brush first, tapping off all the excess products and then pressing it into the skin with my damp beauty blender. The sponge isn't newly damp, it's been sitting around for a while, so it's the perfect amount of dampness not to ruin your makeup underneath. I wanted to do a bit of a modern 90s vibe to the lips, so I'm going in with Velvet Sands, which is a beautiful light neutral beige, and it just gives the right amount of definition around the lips without it looking over the top, it's not too brown. Then I'm also going in with the Vive lipstick in the shade Treasure, which is a peachy nude. And from the bullet, it looks a little bit like it's going to be way too dark. But when you swatch it, it's actually a lot lighter and it's a really beautiful tone. As you know, I love a peachy lip. I don't tend to wear matte lipsticks very often. Outside of filming, I never wear them. I always wear something very, very sheer. But I love the tone of these. They're so comfortable to wear. And overall, I think this looks beautiful paired with the eye makeup. So that completes today's makeup tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I had fun playing with some new products. Tell me which one was your favorite in the description bar below. If you follow me outside of YouTube, over on Instagram, you'll have seen me swatch all of these products before. There I asked if you guys wanted to see a tutorial and you guys said yes, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I will list and link everything in the description bar. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.